ከሌሊት እስከ ጠዋት እንዲሁም ከስብከት እስከ ዛሬ እስከ በጣም የተበከን መላእክታችን ኢየሱስ ክርስቶስ ከምድር ዳርቻ እስከ ምድር ዳርቻ ስሙ ይባለ ስሙ የተመሰገነ ይሁን እንኳን አደረሳችሁ ንኡሳ አሜን ንኡሳን ወይ ታናናሽ ከሚባሉ የጌታ ባላት ያው ባለፈ ሳምንት ስብከት ተነበረ ዛሬ ደግሞ ብርሃን ነው Today is Berhan. Can all of you children say Berhan? Berhan. What is today? Berhan. Berhan or light is one of the minor holidays or holy days <laughs> of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. The misbah or the song that was chanted and led by our brother Deacon Yosef was today about God sending us light. The letter that was read uh, by the associate deacon which ended up being me today for the reading was 1st John and in there we hear that they came to give testimony about the light that came that they saw and that they heard that they tasted that they touched that all of their senses were involved with. The gospel today I'll talk about it again was the gospel of John chapter 1 again it was about light during qurban time our father father thomas told us time after time again that the theme or the trope of today is light again our father as is malaku sang for us in english and in amharic reminiscent of the day of pentecost in all the languages that we are to walk in the light of god in fact in amharic he was inviting all of you he said no he said come come and walk in the light come and walk in the light of god so today to honor that according to our tradition saint yared or holy jared sang in his song aqimu nagara bagorit can you say aqimu Nagara Baorid Agdimu Nagara Baorid That means this is a thing which the prophets foretold in the Orid in the Hebrew Bible This thing is a light not just a light but the light that is the source of light itself If the lights all went out and there are a lot of pretty lights in here there are candles there are electric lights and there are the lights of all of your faces but if all of these lights went out would you be able to see me no yeah yes yes oh you have great eyesight i wish god would give me your eyesight and what would you be able to run around if it was in all darkness no What would happen to you if you tried to run as fast as you can in the darkness with all these people here? You trip and you would fall. So when we don't have the light, we trip and we fall to use your own words. So the light that gave source to the light that began in the universe itself and I'll touch on it again. Make sure that on a daily basis we don't trip and fall in our lives. When we neglect the light, when we forget about the light, we will trip and we will fall. And when we have the light as our guide. In fact, that's what the song chant uh the chanting portion said, was send your light and your righteousness to me and they will guide me. Your righteousness and your light. When we have his light and his righteousness to guide us through the darkness, then we are able to actually see and move and act think speak and do in a manner that he has called us to do so this big light of course in the western tradition all of you are probably excited about what's coming up in the next few days because we have christmas eve and christmas day according to the western tradition our christmas eve of course is not till january 6 and our christmas day is not till january 7 but we will try to honor both days 
because we can remember the birth of Christ as many times as possible, or as sometimes it's called the nativity of Christ, as much as possible to bring a light in our eyes. So in that audience, in that Hebrew Bible, we have sections called the prophets, the writings, and the wisdom books. Just as a reminder, just so that your ears can remember them, I'm going to read to you some of the names of the prophets, because I've told you time and time again that during this time, if you want to hear about this thing, if you want to hear about the light and the righteousness that is Jesus Christ and His birth that we remember in Christmas, then you have to go back and read, and if you can't read well, listen as well as you can to the books of the Bible and the prophets, which is important for this time. So, some of the prophets... Some of the prophets are Joshua, Yasui, Judges, Masafent, Ruth, Ruth, Samuel, Samuel, Kings, Negest, Chronicles, Zena Moadel, Isaiah, Isaias, Jeremiah, Ermias, Ezekiel, Huske, Hosea, Jose, Amos, Amos, Micah, Mikias, Joel, Yoel, Obadiah, Abdiyu, Jonah, Jonas, Nahum, Nahum, Habakkuk, Kambakom, Zephaniah, Sophonias, Haggai, Hagi, Zechariah, Zacharias, and Malachi, or Milchias. So if you recognize any of those names, go to your Bible today when you go home and make sure you read about them. And when you read about them, look to see if you see anything that will remind you about the birthday or the nativity or Lydata Christos of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Whichever language you go to, it's about his birthday. Ganna is Christo Ganna. It's a Greek word. It means the birthday of Jesus. Lydata Christos is the birthday of Jesus. The nativity means when he became a native of this earth, when he was born. So all of it has to do with his birth. And we're all thinking of it throughout this time. So as I said, in the Gospel of John chapter 1, which by the way, in the olden days was used in Goodness to make sure your mouths, <coughs> excuse me, open up and that you read properly. You have to read 1 John and the Gospel of John and the Psalms of David, all of which we read today. So all of which is continuing that tradition, although it's in a different language now, we're reading the same text and we're learning how to read and write still. Those of you who are young and those of us who are older, we're always learning more and more. But in that text, it begins by saying, in the beginning. When it says in the beginning, those are the same words that opens up the book of Genesis. In fact, the Greek text is called Genesis, and we translated that because it means the fitrat, or the way of creation, the way of beginning. But in the Hebrew Bible, the Jews actually just call it in the beginning. They just use the first few words of the book. They don't have another name for it. They just use the first words. So in the beginning, immediately when you hear that, when you're listening to the Gospel of John, you remember Genesis. And so you remember whatever is coming next has to do with the creation, has to do with the beginning, has to do with Genesis. So I have to go reread that. I have to go listen to that one more time. And in there, we learn that the darkness, of course, is pushed away so that the light can come. That's the book of Genesis. Here in the Gospel of John, we are reminded that the light is with the light. And the light was not just with the light, but the light was light itself. That's talking about how Jesus is, in our tradition, called the God-man. He who is both God and human being at the same time. And he came to bring us this light, not so that we could be selfish with it, but so that we could all turn into lanterns. Sometimes when we take our, our twaf, if you've ever seen some of the, the procedures or the sinasarat that we do, we take one big twaf or one big candle, and we get other candles, like these little ones or anywhere else, and we light them. We make sure that there's a light in them at all. The beautiful thing about real candles, not the electric ones, but the fire ones, is that if you notice, there's a shadow to the container 
of the candle. But the actual fire itself has no darkness in it at all. It casts no shadow. And so it's the ultimate example of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Because as we heard earlier today, in Him is no darkness at all. So if we want to say that we are His children, that we are His disciples, that we are following His path, then like all of these little candles that are lit by the cloth that initially lit them, we need to make sure that we have no darkness in us at all. And so as much as possible, we have to try to do that. If you may, you may ask me, how can we do that? We can do that by remembering that our Lord and Savior Jesus is the perfect king and the perfect priest and the perfect prophet. I'll ignore the king and the priest portion for now. We can talk about that another time. But his, prophet, his being a prophet or his prophethood is of utmost importance. The job of the prophet is to take the living word of God, the instruction of God, to put it in his mouth, to swallow it, and to make sure that it stays in him. He makes sure that it stays in him by continually obeying that commandment or that instruction. So he fulfilled that in a perfect way. If we want to be like these little candles in relation to the light that he gives us and make sure that we carry this little light of ours, as the Western tradition also likes to sing about, then what we have to do is what is written later on in the Gospel of John, chapter 13. We'll end up on this note. Repeat after me. This is how everyone will know you are my disciples. This is how everyone will know you are my disciples. If you have love for one another. If you have love for one another. What's about the example?